Mm-hmm. Hello. Good morning again. Hello. Part, part two of episode 33. Someone jinxed us, guys. Uh, yes, I'm trying to remember who it was in mm-hmm. chat that said that, but... It was early. I can't think it of was. It was early on. Someone mentioned they can't wait to see the technical difficulties we face, and uh, here we are. Yeah. Let me in the garden again. Online again. We're back. <laughs> oh. So... All right, guys. I let's think we're talking about trying to find our chat. Garlic. Technical issues, Randy. Are you excited? Randy, Did we? Because Randy, Randy, Randy just got excited about oh. our technical issues. Live now. There it is. Hello. Hi. Come back. We you just were, like to keep things you exciting, were guys. <laughs> you were saying. Uh, it was Alexander. He was the one who said we were going to have technical issues. Good morning, everyone. Rude. Anywho. Thank you, North Star, for sending them our way. We're really bad at this. <laughs> but we like coming on and chat with you guys. So, I mean, one day maybe we'll figure it out. But honestly, I kind of like the excitement it adds to our morning. We just try to keep it <laughs> real. We, you know. <laughs> hey, Lil. Um, okay. Someone was asked, it said their jade plant was yes, not doing too hot. Which, so, tell me more, because mine is struggling. Hers is so beautiful. I'm it just is. insulted because Don't be I, would, me. I would take it in a second. But anyways. She fine. just wants to seal it instead of helping me. Yes. No. So um, it's probably a watering issue. Um, and if it's, you know, not getting the right amount of light, that can be an issue too. But I Does just, it need a lot of light? It doesn't need a lot. It's, but getting, it's not would, like in the window, but it's four feet from a window. Yeah, I need to move it a little bit closer. A lot of times it is a watering thing just because it's in the succulent family and I find a lot of people overwater their succulents. So what I would say is, you know, are you squishing the leaves before you water it? Yeah, to feel if they're firm or not. Yes. Yes. So once they're squishy, then you can water it. Sometimes they'll go squishy if you've overwatered it though too. No, I'm definitely not over. I'm wondering if I'm under when I do it because I'm afraid to over. Okay, so... Overwatering doesn't necessarily have to do with the amount of water you're pouring onto it at that time. It has to do with how frequently. And so you mm-hmm. still want to do a thorough watering when you do it, but okay. you want to space it out. So whenever I'm wondering the leaves, if that's my issue. Yeah, whenever the leaves feel a little less firm, sometimes it's invisible and you can see it's slightly wrinkled or they're a little drooped. On a jade, I don't normally notice the droop as much, but it's like yeah. they'll they'll look just slightly. Wrinkled. It's like slightly visible. And then a leaf will fall off. And I'm like, you <gasps> knock it off. <laughs> well. But I'm propagating all of the fallen leaves. So, yeah. I mean, if that's something, it's going to take a really long time. But yeah. yes. It's fine. So, <gasps> walking that's onions. What I was okay, you can finish. Then I'll go to walk. I got excited because yeah. I'm growing those. That's what I'm saying. So, do that. And if you know that you have your jade in the middle of a room or something, it's not getting light, move it closer to a window. Um, there's a chance that it could be getting too much light. Because it doesn't want bright light, I don't believe, but indirect light. Felt, or yeah, indirect. Yeah, so I would just kind of keep that in mind. Sure. Yeah. I'm going to do that because I need to. Someone asked about walking onions. It is my first year growing them. We actually um, had someone come in and share some with Luke and his team. And so Luke shared a couple with me, and I'm super stoked. Mm-hmm. They are a perennialized onion in our area. And they, when... An onion sends off the top, it puts what it would be like its flower at the top of it. Yeah. And as it dies, it bends down and will self-seed itself. So it will literally walk across your yard. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I didn't hear about that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why they got their name. Interesting. And I'm super stoked about growing them. So I would love all of the info that you guys have on those. They are something we plant in the fall. So mine are ready. I'm planting them when I do my garlic, I think. Um, unless you tell me otherwise. And uh, then, um, yeah. And then we were talking about uh, mulching garlic. I saw someone put in the comment bar before we lost our stream that you're supposed to mulch garlic, and that is correct. I mulched it way too hard mm-hmm. because someone had suggested to do so. And that's what I did. But if you were to do it, you have to pull it off early. And I didn't. That's. I don't know. Either way, didn't work for me. I'm not going to mulch so hard. Yeah. 
we all have different techniques and yeah. it's, you know things want to grow like you always say but it's got to be what kind of works for you too and yeah yeah like don't get me wrong things. i'm really proud of those seven bulbs that i got out of the 200 or so that i planted so norma says suggestions for houseplants for a new mom aloe mint oregano trying to make something pretty as well as beneficial um beneficial I, as in usable yeah is that what you mean because i know she's listing herbs which i don't really consider houseplants but you could have an herb garden indoors yeah um so why not aloe is useful so that is an easy houseplant um i most houseplants are toxic so there's not normally a lot of if you will, like usable benefits, like you're not gonna make tea from a pothos kind of thing, but they're beautiful. So, um, so kind of going the useful part just for now because I don't have as much advice with that. I would say good houseplants to start with. Pothos, really great. It's good for trailing. It's good for trellising up on something. It's beautiful. It grows fast. Um, it can survive in almost any lighting, but I would try to give it. She says yes, using for teas. Ooh, yeah, so then Not I would stick with herb house plants. Yeah, do an herb garden then, and you yeah. can grow a ton of herbs inside. Mm -hmm. um, I usually move my catnip inside. I grow that. Um, I've never tried to do chamomile inside, but that thing is a workhorse, and I have no doubt that you could easily grow in a window. Um, yeah. You could do lemon balm, and as long as you're pruning these things, you know, you're obviously, you have them in a container. Most of them are part of the mint family. They want to go wild, but containing them... Um, yeah. will stunt their growth in a good way, enough to where you can have mm -hmm. it inside. And it's a good excuse to get the cute little herb snips. <laughs> we sell them for $5, oh, but it's okay. Was, uh, you haven't had a shameless plug in a while. I haven't done it in a minute, so I had to throw it in there. Um, yeah, snake mm -hmm. plants are great because they help. Snake plants are nice and low light. To clean air, too. Yeah. So She thinks it's all. So... All plants, I guess, you could say, are air purifiers. Jades are known for it, snake plants. Sure, but, but some more than others. But then when science is done on it, there's something... NASA did a study on this, too, and it really doesn't make a difference in your household that much. Really? I'm going to say, I'll... Even with 74 plants, Kirsten? Yeah. I know someone walked my house, and they were like... Oh, I did sell some plants. I'm I just dropped her off the other day, and you can just see her. She's got one of those... Um, oh, Yeah shelves you know put up shelves in the window and it's just littered with house plants and i love it it's so beautiful with, yes um but yeah so i'm gonna say i don't know that i subscribe to that way of thinking where they're really purifying the air much i don't believe it makes that big a difference but you know do your own research and i could be wrong it's just from the things i've seen recently seeking personal growth yes if you want to have garlic next year you have to plant it this fall mm -hmm. Um, and so your zone six, it all should be coming out within the next month for, I mean, most zones. Mm -hmm. um, zone maybe seven and higher might be in a month and a half, two months, uh, but it's coming. So definitely get it out there. Is it too yeah. late to plant strawberry plants? I just got, no, it's not. And actually, I don't know where you're at. We're going through a week of like mid to high 80s right now. Yeah. I would personally wait until it at least is in the 70s to do it um for a few days so they can work mm -hmm. on getting established make sure they maintain their moisture so they can you know create these strong root systems pull off any blossoms in the fall um because your goal is to get them to overwinter to produce for you next year so just let them focus on the roots yeah that's good yep, yep. Thanks, buddy. Uh, buddy. <laughs> I saw Wicked Awesome Gardening. I'm curious what fruit trees, or was it Wicked Awesome Gardening? I'm sorry. We're using a different yeah. chat right now, and it's very hard to see. Um, well, reload it on there. It's right here. I can't get it up, and you're on a different one. But. Click that. Okay. So, but I was going to say, someone mentioned having fruit trees inside, and that they're um, using grow lights and that's really making a big difference that's and moved. yeah i'm just curious because i've kind of struggled with fruit trees indoors but yeah let me know kind of what you're doing and what kinds you have lemon trees we are somewhere else i don't know here we are at least you guys found us it's fine um 74 house plants yeah she is that right am i is that the right number uh you i didn't sell anymore some. so i had over a hundred but then i sold some <laughs> but i also split up some so now i have more so i don't know <laughs> Oh, that's funny. 
Um, what zone is Belleville, Michigan? I wish I had the mental capacity to be able to know zones for everywhere off the top of my head. Yeah. Conveniently, Google does. Uh, go, all you have to do is type in, um, I usually use zip code. For some reason, it works better for me. Yeah. Um, it seems more accurate. Or you can go straight to the Farmer Almanac, uh, Farmer's Almanac on Google and type your zip code in. It'll give you your growing zone there. That's where I will send you. Mm -hmm. I've almost killed my lemon tree six times in the last year. I hey, like the we fact have talked about that a lot. The fact <laughs> yeah. that you've brought your lemon tree back six times makes you sound pretty freaking awesome. <laughs> yeah. So it wasn't you that said it. I saw someone else, but I lost it in there. But yeah. So I'm impressed you brought it back. I had, um, I had one that was beautiful, variegated lemon tree, and I got it discounted. So that's awesome. But it died. Um, I took some bad advice. First of all, I got spider mites really fast, which every lemon tree I've had gets spider mites really fast. Or my friend gifted me one and it had spider mites. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Well, it was her the gift that keeps her dying giving. lemon tree. It was a very tall with one leaf. It died. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I always get spider mites. I got some advice from someone to keep it consistently wet, which is not what you should do. So yeah. Um, they are live strawberry plants. Yeah. I don't, I mean, mm. bare roots, I think, would be a challenge right now. So I'm, I'm you can often find um, big box stores are getting rid of, they'll have like planters that have a bunch of strawberry plants packed into them, and they're basically throwing them off the shelves. And so you can divide those out and plant them in your ground now. Just make sure you're um, stewarding them to grow roots instead of produce yeah. for right now until next season, of course. Man, um, we could have a whole thing on lemon trees. Gem Jenny said that she killed her clementine, almost killed her eureka. The pink lemonade is going strong, though. Ooh. That was my one that died. It was a variegated one that was the a eureka, pink, which um, is p the pink fruit, but the in the outside is like yellow and green stripe. Hmm. Beautiful. So if you can do fruit trees, that's a beautiful one that I would recommend. Mm -hmm. What do you do with full sun plants that are suffering from too much rain? That's How's your drainage? Problem. It would be your drainage would be the issue. Um, it technically shouldn't have much to do with sun unless they're getting fungus from having wet leaves and the sun beating on them, mm -hmm. uh, which you could do like a hydrogen peroxide dilution mm -hmm. and that way it will help nip any fungus in the butt. Uh, but otherwise you need to work on your drainage and that could be something you're working on through it may take a little while to get there, um, but I would suggest if you struggle with drainage, building up your beds and making sure you're using organic matter. Um, the core system works very well out of um, the core method that Luke uses in the autopilot. That works well for drainage um, because it pulls, it pulls excess moisture away from your plant while also storing the water for when your roots do need it. Uh, so drainage is what you need to work on. Um, so when, like we, we had some really heavy rains this summer, when we get a really heavy rain and your garden is waterlogged, there is no kind of like fast fix for that. It's Go more, in and trench it. Do whatever you yeah. can. Either you're going up your walkways and you're digging in your walkways to try to pull that water down that way. Um, yeah, if you can. Otherwise... There's not a ton that yeah. a lot of a lot of gardens got drowned out this year, especially yeah. in Michigan. And I know um, this is when a our container gardeners feel pretty good. I know. Yeah, <laughs> they're like, we will survive. <laughs> <laughs> um, organic. See my question in all caps above. I missed it. Organic hippie chick. If I missed a question of yours, please post it again. It wasn't intentional. I just don't always see them. Yeah. Um, oh, nice. it says in Florida we're getting too flooded for potted plants. Too. No. Ah. Bring them in. I don't yeah, know. <laughs> move them. Move them. Put them on something higher. Constant heavy rains. My goodness. Um, took a dr drill in order to provide more drainage. Get crafty. Yeah, for your potted yeah. plants, um, either you. I'm trying to think of a way for if it's just you. If you can get it up on some sort of table and just inch off edges and drill upward into your planter, mm -hmm. create more drainage holes. 
Yeah. Give it the chance because worst off, if you feel like next season it has too many drainage holes, all you really got to do is put a rock on it and then put your soil in and um, mm -hmm. yeah. it'll block the hole enough. You can even put cork in there. You know, or we'll plug it. Yeah. yeah. Cut you can size. get creative. But as long as you're not putting those packing peanuts. Yeah. Don't do that. Also, your roots will try to grow into that and then you got plastic and yeah. Yucca. Don't do it. Yeah. Uh, you know, I actually, I do have a question and I think it's pretty on topic because we're doing a lot of harvesting right now, of course. Um, have you guys put anything up yet? Do you guys can and preserve or anything? I just put out a, oh, yeah. a newsletter last week talking about preserving and the multiple ways we can do it. It was just a touch on it um, because more or less I don't know how deep people want to go here or if anyone here is interested in learning how to put up your produce uh, by dehydrating, by canning, pickling, mm -hmm. fermenting, um, cold storage, you know, all of these. Are you guys putting anything up? Yeah. I've been doing the fruit dehydrating, which I like. Yes. But a lot of my stuff is just like, you know, when you can dehydrate your fruits and stuff, you can throw your cereal, oatmeal, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Love that. Or a little Delish. trail mix. So good. Yes. So useful. Yeah, this past weekend, what, Sunday night? I'm trying to think of my numbers. It's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, close to like 30 quarts of pickles. Wow. And I think it was 24 pints of pickles. And so my pickles are pretty much done for the year. Victoria and Ella are going to love you. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I did green beans and I did 20 quarts, 25 pints. I have one more bushel to put up for that. Um, I've done jams, jellies, and pie filling. Like, I love canning season. It's, oh. It is my jam. No pun intended. And um, yeah, so I'm curious. I'm just getting into dehydrating for the season. Uh, I'm dehydrating beans and corn. Um, I'll do carrots when those come. Yeah. And I store it in this big jar and make like a vegetable medley so I can toss it in soups oh, or I stews or stuff like that. Um, so, so yeah, what are you guys up to? You gardeners doing that. are so smart. Pickled carrots, beets, and cucumbers. Yes, mm. nice. Canned salsa for the first time. Aaron, That's exciting. Nice work. Love pickled beets, by the way. Good choice. Yeah. Um, there's just so much you can do. So if you have too much produce, like, there's so many different ways you can store it, which maybe you know, we could talk canning about that more, Canning is my too. jam. Normally, I'm glad you picked up on that. <laughs> uh, pressure canned mm -hmm. about 20 pints of beans so far. Cold, wow. packed, couldn't be easier. I agree. People I are excited about canning. Yes. Oh, I'm, I'm super, <laughs> super glad about this. Yeah. Um, uh, it's the best to be able to have your harvest all season long. I mean, my... Yeah. My goal is regenerative sustainability, um, so I want to be able to produce and put up enough for my family for a year until I can reproduce yeah. it and start again, uh, and I'm like on the track for it, double the time I was last year, so I'm super proud of myself for that. I love Wicked Awesome Gardening. I would like to, but I eat everything before I get around to canning it. That's fine. <laughs> I'm cool with it. If you yeah. eat it all, before, then that's great. It's going to a yeah. great use. I... I slowly get to it. I see, yeah. yeah. And I have to can one because so much comes in. Two, I feel very guilty when things go bad. And you really shouldn't yeah. because especially when we're using like a composting system, it all goes back. So it's not the end of the world. But like I just you always think of myself. Work into it. I think yeah. of myself in February when I'm just like pining for a big tomato or some good celery. Yeah. If you haven't had homegrown celery, do it. And I know I'll bring some for you. It's almost there. I love celery. Okay. And I'm like pining for it. I feel so guilty that I let it go to waste. So. Oh. It's fine. Norma says it's anyone made powders. I've seen yes. a lot about dehydrating and making things into powders. I've actually. Not heard anyone mention it here before, but that's an interesting idea. Yeah, I, mean, like, I do um, beet mm, powder yeah. for like juices or smoothies. And I this week this I am so going smart. hard on greens because we have to tackle some greens in the farm. Yeah. Uh, so I will dehydrate all of that, and that way you can toss it into stews. You can toss that in a smoothie. This is so smart. The beet powder just really got me. That's really mm -hmm. smart. Yeah. And, and in all reality, go look up like a good organic beet powder. Mm -hmm. um, one, beets are phenomenal for you. Uh, the nutrients they have packed in them is just out of this world. 
when you look up an organic beet powder, it's really expensive. Very expensive. Yeah. Or just beet but juice it'd be so in general. But it's so easy to make. It's so yeah. easy to make. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. I've been very interested in making tomato powder. Definitely. Honestly, I haven't done... I haven't done that one yet. Um, celery is so small, tough to grow in northern Alberta. It needs so much water. So much. If you think you gave it enough water, double it. Because it really needs a lot of water. Celery is a fast drinker. And, well, and it's mostly water when you think about it, when you eat it and everything. Um, I thought... Okay, so this one is interesting to me. I did scrambled egg powder. I knew you were going to pull it out. What? <laughs> I never never would have thought about that. So, so then what do you, how do you use it? Just, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, great. Uh, uh -huh. That's awesome. I'm just curious how you use it now. Yeah. Um, oh, I'll make, well. Yes, I use, um, either you can use a blender or a food processor does mm -hmm. work a little better to blend it down to a powder. Um, I do pe like peppers that way too. I'll dry them and just, I won't take them all the way to a powder typically because I like, um, like flakes. So yeah. I'll pulse that down and get pepper flakes. It's a great way to stock your herb cabinet for the year too. Um, Archie asks, do you think you could powder apples and have apple juice whenever you want? I don't see why not. I Like, yeah, I just never would have thought about these things, but now. I'm here to try that this yeah. year. Apples I, are coming, guys. Michigan loves apples, so. You can make a bunch of pre-made smoothies. With just mixing all the powders Just all the together. powders, and then all you have to do is put, like, water and ice. It would make smoothies so much easier. There's actually a company that does easier. that, and this makes so much cheaper. So much cheaper, so much easier. Okay, okay Sorry, she's guys. ready. <laughs> yeah. She's here for it. Um, yeah, um, sun-dried tomatoes. Absolutely, Archie. That's another great one. Mm -hmm. um, did you know that, like, especially in this time of year, it's really hot, and we kind of dread turning our ovens on in yeah. this temperature because then our ac is competing with it if you even have ac otherwise it's just cooking your house you can yeah. use your car to dehydrate things isn't that cool because think about it you get in the car on a hot day like <laughs> bait yeah <laughs> that's hilarious you could put them on a tray up in your windshield on your dash and um that's a good place to dehydrate things mm -hmm. especially if you're monopolizing your kitchen, mm -hmm. which is often what's happening in my house. I do have a fruit dehydrator, and I will say you can get them relatively cheap, like forty dollars or so. And the nice thing is, is that it does put up some heat, but it's not like turning on the oven. So sure. In the summer, I've been doing that, but I will say it does take longer. But it's kind of nice because I can keep an eye on things so they mm -hmm. don't get overdone either. Sure. So yeah, just a little recommendation too. What do you know? What nice. brand your dehydrator is? I don't. I can't think. I mean, I have a few different ones. I have yeah. like a Nature's Harvest. I do have an Excalibur. Um, and honestly, I don't necessarily have a favorite. Yeah, it dehydrates. They all yeah. kind of, they kind of all do it for yeah. me. Yeah, I will say like mine has layers, um, so you can do a ton, or you can just do one layer, and it'll heat up faster actually. So, um, Kim, mm -hmm. I am almost done with this week's newsletter, so maybe next I'll throw in my tips for celery growing. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're not already on our newsletter, head to the website. You'll see it in the upper left-hand corner to sign on for the newsletter. That way you're getting that. Um, oh my gosh. Uh, he says he the eggs, he just adds water back to them. Oh. Does it come out like scrambled? Like, What's the consistency on that? I'm kind of a texture person. Yeah, it's really I interesting like, I to me, though. I feel like mashed potato texture. That's how I picture it. But if you fluff mashed potatoes with a fork, yeah, you can really so get it back up. Uh, Jenny, you're cracking me up. She said, car cookies. We used to do that in South Texas. God, so cookies. put cookies up on the tray, put it in the windshield. Yeah. Awesome. Your car would smell so good. So good. <laughs> that is so <laughs> The Keebler tree. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, celery salt. That's a big one I do, um, especially when I'm harvesting uh, the celery for juicing. I'll sometimes just cut the leaves off and dry those. Not that I can't juice them, but I'll dry them and use them for salt. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. I'm so glad you guys are interested in preservation because mm -hmm. now... Um, now I can dive a little harder into yeah. that. No people are interested. So if you're not following the newsletter, go do it. Uh, that's where I sent all this info out. Uh, like I said, this last one was very 
Um, I just explained the different modes of preservation. I didn't go into practices at all. Mm -hmm. um, but next go around, I will, maybe I'll dive into each one each week kind of thing and do another yeah. series like I, I did mean, for pests. It's good to know what to do with your harvest so they don't go bad. Yeah. And I love the people that do little farmer stands at the end of their driveway so to pick up this <gasps> produce. I want to know about those I, too. I, yeah, and I love that. But, you know, if you do want to kind of stretch out for yourself as well, there's mm -hmm. so many things you can do. And there is nothing yeah. like a can of garden goodies in the middle of winter. <laughs> so good. Anywho. Love it. We are, yes, Luke is the one commenting about spinach powder. He is on here somewhere oh. in bright yellow. <laughs> uh, yeah, lettuce, powdered spinach, kale. Um, yeah, all that. Great. Broccoli leaves. Great. All good things. Oh, yeah. That's an interesting one. So, guys, we, I think, are all done for today. Never heard of celery salt. Ooh, Archie. Uh, <laughs> Get on that. <laughs> um, well, thank yeah. you for being here, guys. And yeah, we're sorry about the technical difficulty, but you know. You would you would miss it if it wasn't. We were here. jinxed. So yeah. I'm just right now, Xander. But, but yes, yeah, so we're grateful for you guys being here. Uh, we'll be here next week, 9 30 yeah. on Tuesday morning. And uh, yeah, no technical difficulties, I'm gonna call it. We'll Why okay. do people want to jinx us? I don't know. Um, but right. also follow us on Root Shoots and Coffee, all yeah. spelled out on Instagram. And uh, if we have posts, we'll reshare those, just kind of build the community. Mm -hmm. If we ever have an issue and for some reason we're not coming live, seeing as YouTube is like our own platform here that we get to reach you guys, our only other option is Instagram. So follow us there. You can get all our mm -hmm. updates there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we... Popeye powder. <laughs> mm. It caught my eye oh. um, for the greens. Anyways, yeah. so yeah, we're good. Give this video a thumbs up. We really do appreciate it. <laughs> and the last one. And 